Hey there, welcome to the Drawing Codex. In this video, I want to do a simple drawing lesson covering one thing. How do we draw the figure from different angles? How do we draw it from above, from below, etc.? This is one of the biggest challenges that faces the artist at the outset. And even when you're well into your artistic journey, it can be a real stumbling block. And what I want to do is give you a few really, really simple exercises and ways to think about this so that you can practice. Now, obviously, this is something that relies on a lot of foundational perspective, and there's a lot of moving parts here. But I think there's a couple of key concepts that you can apply straight away, even if you haven't fully fleshed out your drawing foundation, even if your perspective is not 100%. I think there's a lot of things that you can take away and start practicing to make sure that your figures look as if they're grounded. Anyway, let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome again to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing, and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It gives you my basic advice for how to get up and running quickly in Photoshop with a line and color style. I go over how to build a simple, reliable process in Photoshop, and I give you my tips for going from thumbnail to the finished image. I also give you all the brushes and all the basic stuff you need to get up and started with the line and color style. This is where we create worlds with simple line and color. So it's not like there's a lack of information on these ideas of how to draw the figure from different angles. The basic idea, as should be pretty obvious, is that we combine the simple idea of taking a mannequin, of taking a stick figure, and then we basically just rotate it in space. The problem is that's easier said than done, and it's hard to know how to approach it. In the same way, you can read Andrew Loomis's book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth, which is great, and it has a lot of information there, but again, I think... The challenge for me when I was figuring out how to do a lot of this is what do I start with and how do I actually make that apply not just to the standard human anatomy, but maybe how do we make it apply to more cartoony things as well? I think what I want to do is, again, try those two dual concepts. One is, again, how do we draw the, the standard mannequin, but also maybe something a lot more cartoony may also help us to understand how this functions so I can demonstrate that to you. But basically what I want to try and do is give you a simple exercise that you can go away and either follow along with me or take with you and just practice in your sketchbook as you go. Now, this is one of those concepts that I think is really important. And when I was starting out, again, I'd have ideas and they'd often be stifled by the fact that I couldn't draw characters from all sorts of different angles. And it took me a long time to really figure out, you know, how to do that. But... I think it's important to note that often when we are drawing things that, you know, you don't always have to draw things from crazy angles. Not everything has to be some ridiculous, amazing angle, um, you know, where you're drawing stuff from a, a crazy, you know, sort of action pose where there's a million characters you can see, right? Like this panel here is a little bit like that. You know, there's tons of characters that are all fighting. Camera's low. That's important. That's a little bit different to what I want to do. And again, um, in this exercise, because in order to do that, you kind of have to begin with the basics. You sort of have to really, really understand the, the simple way that perspective and boxes and box sort of logic or theory relates to the figure. And this is actually a really good way, just practicing drawing that mannequin and that figure from different angles. It's a really good way to understand the concepts of proportion and structure and just how you actually go about building something that kind of looks solid, but is viewed from an angle that is maybe more interesting or exciting. Anyway, I don't want to go on for too long because I think you get the basic idea of where we're going with this. Let's jump over to the drawing table and get started. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, as I said, in most cases, when you're drawing comics, you are working within a fairly limited framework of poses and things that you need 
to create that you need to kind of make real from your imagination or from the script in most cases i think what you'll find is that you don't always have to draw a lot of these heavy down angle shots right it just doesn't often make sense when you do it's really really important but if we think about often you know if i take the basic idea of creating a a loomis stick figure mannequin and if you're new to the channel and you're not quite um, sure what I'm talking about, there's a lot of other videos that I have on the channel talking about the concepts of creating a mannequin and drawing solidly. And I'll link to a few of the basic ones in the description. So check that out if you might get a little bit lost with exactly what I'm talking about here. But the basic idea, as you may know if you've looked at these concepts before, is that we basically just draw a stick figure. Now, you can think about the basic idea here being that maybe you might have a panel where there's a few characters, right? And they're talking. So there's lots of situations where you might want to frame a panel or an illustration or what, whatever you want to do, right? You, you, you might have lots of reasons. So again, I'm just kind of winging this a little bit, not being that technical with it, just for illustrative purposes. All right, but again, you might have some people talking to each other in a panel. And you need to do this kind of down shot. Now, that's useful, but in my experience, most of the time what you want to do is see faces and make sure that the posing is sort of clear. And this is quite a disassociated shot. And you may have a lot of stories and a lot of ideas that involve this basic concept of, hey, we're, we're looking down at a scene. All right, again, there might be there might be more characters over here. All right, again, just sort of just roughly transferring All right, some of those ideas. Oh, that one's getting a little bit a little bit out of whack. But again, you know, there might be a whole crowd full of people. All right? And now if if you if you don't know what you're doing, this type of scene is just an absolute unmitigated nightmare to execute on. Um, so it it is really really important to kind of understand your your basic perspective and all of that stuff. It'll really really make your life a lot easier and it'll make these kind of things a lot more fun. In most cases, though, I do want to put out point out because I think it is super important to remember that. In most cases, we're just dealing with minor variations, with minor tilts. So, and this is just my experience, but again, this is just practical advice if you're thinking about this. Often, this is the thing that terrifies me, right? I wake up in a cold sweat as a, as a young artist, sort of thinking about, please don't make me draw this kind of scene because it's just too hard. Um, but what I found in most cases is that, yeah, there's a couple of things, right? You can see this, this scene is a little bit like that. We've got a few characters kind of from above. But the idea of having to draw extensive scenes where, you know, there's all these sort of dynamic angles, maybe in superhero comics, there might be a little bit more of that. But in most cases, we're dealing with looking at faces and fairly simple shots, which is very, very similar to what you would look at in a film. We're often choosing shots for clarity so we can read the character's face, again, in comics or similarly in an illustration. You kind of want to see the character's face. You want to see them fairly straight on. And, and I think in most cases, this sort of thing is, is not actually what you spend most of your time doing. And certainly if you're doing illustrations, primarily often what we're talking about from a compositional standpoint is, uh, you know, it, it's frequently involving characters who are pretty front on. You know, if you deal with your, your classic sort of pinup character, right, it, it basically is some form of this. Now, it might involve a lot of twisting of the figure, but not a lot of this need to make it grounded. 
and draw it from different angles. But I feel like this idea of just learning how do we draw the figure like this, and then how do we do the opposite of that, which is draw it from from below, All right? Go here, same stick figure idea. Boom, boom. Got a head there. All right. And then we're going to have arm here, arm here. All right, something like this. And again, you can you can continue the basic concept as you go, right? If we want to do that from the, the back, um, very, very simple, right? We just sort of flip the character around, right? And then we're drawing this. So I'm just going to be putting in rough perspective um, to illustrate what, what I need. And, and this, this is typically what I would do for myself. And I'm just illustrating the different options here. So we will get to some actual exercises and I'll talk specifically about what I'm doing and how you can pull some concepts from books like the Loomis um, books or, or other sort of how to draw books and, and sort of actually try and get your head around this, this basic concept. But again, you know, we do it from the back. It's, it's the same thing. All right. So here the face is like this. All right here it's from the back. And and the difference really is just what does that arc of the spine look like and how do these limbs tend to bend, right? As a, as a very sort of rough basic idea. So again, these are a little bit from uh, above and you know below. These ones are a little bit more. The basic concept is the same. Um, again, the, the, the reason that you would have, uh, you know, some need to draw like a really kind of worm's eye view or something like this. I don't know why, why you would need to do that, but so you did again, it's going to be a very similar concept, right? Feet are going to be on the ground and shoulders are going to be somewhere here right head is going to be up there we're going to have some arms here right so again sorry that guys got a little bit a little bit squished but again it's the same idea it's just a matter of how much how much exaggeration is there on this perspective grid if that makes sense. Let's see if we can do better on that head. All right. Let's see if we can find the form of that torso a little bit. Head goes there. Yeah, might look that's a little bit a little bit better. But it's it's all the same idea. What we're doing is we're taking the basic concept of a skeleton or a mannequin or a stick figure and we're just drawing it from different angles. As I said, the problem is that's its own challenge. And that really is what I want to talk about in this lesson and show you is how do we combine the concepts of box logic or drawing simple geoforms, which uh, again uh, is, is very, very much linked to this. And how do we find some exercises and things you can do so you can jump in and start practicing this. All right, so if we look at the pages that you might find in a traditional drawing book, that are going to be related to this concept it's it's often at the beginning and it's where we link up concepts of perspective so you can see here some great illustrations of how the concepts of proportion and perspective and just lining things up are going to work in three dimensions so this is really what we're dealing with is the idea that if we understand the basic proportions of the mannequin which you can find in some of the additional videos I've got that I'll link below so you can check those out. But uh, again, I'll, I'll go over them super quickly uh, in this video so you can just jump in if you need. And then it's just simply a matter of understanding how perspective works. A lot of it does involve this simple concept of thinking of a plane 
and how we derive some simple proportion from that plane. All right, so the task is pretty simple. What we need to do and what is good to practice is just practice drawing space or a line that your character is going to occupy. And what we want to do is find these proportional markers. The one that I think is the most important to find and the one that you can practice finding is the halfway mark. And that essentially is going to divide the character around about the bottom of the pelvis or at the crotch area. This will also line up with the base of the hand. And this is a really, really important marker because, again, it basically divides the legs from the top of the figure. And this really is one of the major things that you're trying to do. So what you can practice doing is drawing that character in two dimensions. And then you can practice drawing them in three dimensions. Now, once you get a feel for the proportional division, it's a lot easier to add dimension. So if we, and again, I'm just going to be fairly rough with this. So apologies if some of these lines don't, don't match up. Um, I won't do this with a ruler because it's a little bit easier to just kind of see when we're doing it by hand. But some of these lines might not match up. The more accurate you can be with this, the better. And I'd say if you study your basic perspective with a ruler, it'll really help you to make sure you're not making errors based on simple um, you know, errors of the hand, let's say. But either way, it's important to understand how accurate you need to be with these lines. So even if you're not using a ruler, you have to understand how likely are you to gauge proportion in two dimensions. Um, if you're having trouble doing it in two dimensions, then it's very tricky for you to just magically <laughs> turn that into three dimensions. So just remember that. The first thing we're going to do is just figure out how do we draw that character in two dimensions and we're going to divide the mannequin up into one proportion and two proportions as I said basically dividing the character at halfway and that sort of crotch area right so we've got something like this. Now, as I said, I've got more videos that talk about this in detail. But this should illustrate the basic point. So what we need to find is these set of proportions. We've got one, two, three, so one, two, three, four at the top. And we use these to define essentially where the head is going to go up top, where the top of the shoulders are going to go, and where the sort of um, normally this line is a really good line for where the, the breasts or the nipples are going to sort of go again halfway up the arm. And this bottom of this third marker is where you're going to have your navel and the bottom of the elbow. Down below, we're going to again divide this second proportion in half, and we've got one, two. The top is going to be the top of the legs, and the second one is the bottom of the legs. We've got some feet down here. We then know that the hand is probably going to come a little bit above the knee, normally one hand length above the knee, somewhere again around there. And that's the simple two-dimensional proportion. Again, what we're doing is just making a stick figure out of this concept here. So this is where just, you know, potentially copying these things or studying these or having some, uh, you know, you print out a, a version of this on your, um, you know, computer or something like that, and print it out, stick it up on the wall. It really helps to kind of make sure this stuff is fully imprinted into your memory. So it's important here that we find this halfway point. This division is really, really going to help. And again, you can fully study the figure, you can fully study all of these, but this is really the first exercise that I think you should apply. And this is the primary exercise that I think will really, really help you to just understand how to draw the figure from different angles. So in this case, if we transfer that proportion 
right? So I'm sort of drawing it as a plane here, but this is just roughly to kind of illustrate things. Now I can guesstimate roughly where halfway up there is, but this is what we're dealing with when, all right, we can divide that up. All right, we can divide that up. This is where thinking about those proportions in 2D will help us in 3D. So you can see that if I find the midpoint, then it's very easy for me to roughly guesstimate where these other one, two, three, four proportions are going to be. In the same way, it's going to be a lot easier for me to now guesstimate where these feet and legs are going to be. That is the baseline. And if we think about essentially repeating this concept again and again, it's just a matter of getting to a point where you line all of these things up. Now, obviously, this changes as you pose the figure differently, as you move things around, as the character moves. But if you're thinking about how to get your head around this in the beginning, this is where you start. And I think that can be one of the biggest challenges with this overall exercise, is just understanding what is actually going to teach you how to get better at this. It often is this simpler exercise where you're just thinking about, okay, let's make sure I can control proportion as I just adjust the figure and draw it from um, a slightly different angle, right? So if we if we take a, a simple, got a little sort of toy here that will sort of help us understand this, just start by rotating the figure a little bit, right? Just start by trying to draw it from a little bit of an angle there, and then maybe you can draw it from an angle that's slightly below, and then you can maybe try draw it from behind, etc etc just ratchet up the complexity a little bit by bit that's one of the things that will really really help you this is where it all happens at that halfway point so what you can do is just practice the idea of how do you divide up that space So what we're doing is essentially taking the fundamental principle of perspective here that is the one you take away. And that is that we can apply whatever is possible with two-dimensional geometry to three-dimensional perspective as long as we have a good idea where the vanishing points are and where the essential grid is. Right, so we've got a grid, boom, boom. So I can do the same thing here because these corners don't, they don't move in two dimensional space and I can draw a line between them and then I know how to divide up that space. So this is the fundamental concept of perspective that will help you to initially gauge that proportion so we can think about this right if we have like a lot of extreme exaggeration we still can find halfway up and it's this experimentation with this basic concept that will teach you a lot about how to change the camera angle now behind this is the concept of the perspective grid, which I think is its own challenge. And this is where what we can try and do is understand the basic takeaways that we're going to get from perspective as it relates to the figure. But if you have to understand that there's a point at which you need to go away and learn perspective properly if you want to really, really get stuck into this. But the fundamental thing that will help you understand it is the box logic or just viewing the box that surrounds your space. 
you've probably seen a lot of people talk about this and there's a lot of discussion about this as being important for your drawing to understand the grids and the simple idea of three-dimensional space. So this is like a perspective grid. It's a sense that all these lines are heading towards a vanishing point. And again, I'm just being very rough. Now, what we're trying to do here is increase our ability to visualize three-dimensional space around the character. And that's really all you have to do. What you have to do is imagine that as you rotate the cube, the figure rotates. As you rotate the figure, the cube rotates. And don't worry too much about the rest of perspective. Again, the more you can understand about it, the better. But at the outset, what we have to think about is just this simple concept of where these lines might be and just make sure that as we line things up things like our feet things like our shoulders are lining up with each other now again that will change as the hands move right as the hand moves up as we pose the character obviously all of that changes it's really important to start and again get your understanding of the initial perspective right though because it's very easy to move things around once you get the character feeling as if they're solid. So the first part of the exercise is as I said just study and get good at dividing up space with different grids. I actually have a whole video on this basic concept that is talking about how you draw straight lines and one of the reasons I, I use a grid as a good way for you to understand how to draw straight lines is because often the reason we're drawing straight lines is to draw a grid so the concept of physically being able to draw grids is super important But what you do here with the figure is just draw some different grids and then try and figure out where the halfway point is. Again, that's not a very good one. Keep going. Keep experimenting. Etc. Etc. Uh, we can think about Again, that idea of drawing a character where we're at a worm's eye view or a bird's eye view, whatever it is. The most important thing initially is really basic. Just get that initial halfway point there. Once you do that, everything else becomes easy. Now, how do we sort of connect up the figure with this? Because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are, at this point, sort of tuning out because this seems boring. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges is understanding how this relates to what you want to do and why is it important. Well, obviously, once we get this right, we can then start to apply it to everything else. If we don't get this right, everything else is kind of a waste of time. All right, so how do we actually apply that? What I want to do mostly is talk about how that is applied and show it to you and give you a few little tools so that you can copy along, maybe try this with some of your characters or start to think about it. The goal here is that as the more we can connect up figures and characters and interesting things with the topics of perspective, the more you're likely to get really interested in perspective and improving your perspective. If you can directly translate and apply the concepts that you might learn by studying one point, two point, three point perspective, etc., at improving your technical drawing, then you can directly say, hey, now that I know that I've got this 
uh, a little bit more accurate. That means the lines that I'm going to use to line up my character are going to be more accurate. I think that is the goal here. It's really easy doing drawing lessons to get lost in the weeds about perspective and form drawing and the concepts of boxes. So what I'm going to try and do is again, just show you a little bit more how I do this so that hopefully you can get interested in learning the perspective if that's something that is lacking. And we can do some more basic perspective um, lessons on the channel as well. Let me know what you'd like to see. So the way that I start by this and the way that I would apply the concept of those Loomis books to drawing and drawing the mannequin is as follows. Let's start by drawing a character from above as I was doing before. The most important thing that I think we can start with is just the center line. The center line is the thing that really helps us to anchor the figure. And this is similar to this center line here that is holding up the skeleton figure. This is an imaginary line running directly down the center of the body. And we can kind of really use this to figure out where that character is situated. So here we can, let's define some fairly sort of benign perspective here. This is all I'm using. So you can see this is actually similar to a box, right? If we think about a box being like this, what I'm drawing is this, right? So I'm, I'm drawing the center of the box. You can imagine if there was a line there and a line there, and then a line directly down the middle. That's kind of what I'm thinking about here. Where is the perspective? But I'm not drawing a box because in my experience, trying to fit a character in a box is not actually a good way to start. But in this case, that can be useful. Now, what I'm gonna do is guesstimate the halfway point up here from here to here. And this is something where, again, if you're having trouble drawing a line, Right, again, thinking about where the perspective for that might be, and then trying to sort of guesstimate where halfway up is. If that's something that's troubling you, again, the more you learn about perspective, the better your ability to guesstimate that will be. If you're struggling, one of the things you can do is, again, formalize your drawing of these sort of elements and use those two-dimensional drawing tricks that we transfer to three dimensions, right? And see if you can find, bang, the center of that. So again, if I was to do that formally here, right? I'm just gonna imagine that the, there is some sort of grid here that makes sense, right? So both these lines are going to some vanishing point. And I've got a line here, boom. Try and yeah, guesstimate that's kind of down there straight. All right. Boom. And then we can do the same thing here. So this is really the one that is super important to get right. Oh, I don't have don't have a big enough ruler. Let's see if I can I'll sort of see if I can guesstimate it kind of there. I think it's somewhere. Look, it's don't do that at home, people. Get a get a longer ruler. Um, but I think this is going to be that's going to be eh, it's pretty close. It's somewhere around there. So that is pretty close. Again, my guesstimation. And if we were to look at the vertical distance here, right? That's kind of 19. Half of 19 is somewhere around here, nine and a half. So it's actually sort of like pretty much visually and measurement wise exactly the same. Now that's going to change depending on how much extreme perspective you get. But what I would do if you're thinking about drawing characters from above and different angles is just start with something basic like this. If you start to get to the point where you're thinking, oh, drawing characters from above equals really, really distorted grids. So it's not just that we're drawing the character from above, 
right? It's that we're, we're drawing these kind of really extreme perspective shots. What you're doing is getting two concepts mixed up, in my opinion. One is the concept of the camera angle and how much distortion there is and how much exaggeration in the grid there is from the concepts of lining things up and thinking about where the camera actually might be in relation to the figure. It's a lot easier to start with very low distortion. Again, it's very easy here to <laughs> jump into a whole another subject of camera lenses, etc, etc, etc. The point is that you can draw a character, again, like a small character that's like fairly far away. There's not going to be heaps and heaps of distortion on this figure um, because, again, they're fairly small in relation to the camera. With a much larger figure, right, that gets really close to the camera, right, we can sort of take this really close to the camera. Sorry, it's going to get blurry. But you see the closer to the camera we get, the more distortion you get, right? So, again, sorry, it's blurry, but you get the basic idea. The camera angle is, is relating to what we're dealing with here in terms of extreme perspective. Now, that's something where the more of this extreme perspective you do, the better you'll be able to relate this to this. But when you're learning, stick with this. Just make it a very simple grid where you don't have a lot of distortion. Once you've done that, you can ratchet up the complexity. Super, super important. And again, if you're struggling with some of these concepts, as I said before, go check out some more fundamental perspective exercises. A lot of those you can actually see and, and study within those Loomis books. And again, I will make some more in the future on the channel. So the basic concept here is, again, we've got these proportional markers. And I'm just going to guesstimate, right, some lines going along here. Right, and we can also visualize some sort of lines going here that might sort of help us. And then we've also got, we're sort of halfway up here. Oh, yeah, maybe let's sort of guesstimate that. Try and draw a line. And what we're doing is adding just a very, very simple modification of, of our sort of initial Loomis proportion and sort of drawing where we learn to draw the, the mannequin like this. Right, I've got a head here, neck here, right, shoulders here, etc. So we're drawing the mannequin like this. What we're doing is we're taking these lines which don't have a lot of distortion on them and we're just making sure that we draw them from different angles. That really is all that's going on. Just because you don't have extreme distortion in your perspective doesn't mean it isn't in perspective. That really is just related to the lens and where we're seeing characters from. Again, if you think about going back to that you know, sketch I had before where it had a bunch of little characters on the ground, normally that's going to be taken with a camera lens that's quite far away taking a big sort of scenic shot from afar and you're not actually going to have a lot of this distortion. This type of distortion is going to be much more prevalent when you've got the object really, really close to the camera and there's going to be a lot more distortion there. So just keep that in mind. Now, this is still perspective even though it's not um, ridiculously distorted. What we're trying to do is get used to lining up the character and drawing them from above and below. So here we're just going to do above and hopefully um, I'll do a quick one below and then we'll do a quick little sort of um, more cartoony character to show you how you apply the same basic concepts to something with a little bit more um, different proportional set. A little bit more of a different proportional set. So again, the reason I feel like focusing on the center line is important is that really is at, literally at the core of what we are trying to do. So I've got one, two, three, and four. And here I've got, right, I've got my one, right, two. So what I know is that here, right, I'm going to have my sort of pelvic, probably a little bit higher, right, we're going to have the pelvic bit here. And this, 
All right, rib cage is actually going to come down here. So really good to get used to drawing these forms out in three dimensions. And this really is the skill that's probably more important and is going to help you. Is it, the, the grid helps us line up these points. So here I'm going to have, all right, we've got the the spine coming there. All right, we're going to have spine coming up there and it's going to go into the head, just somewhere around here. Boom, boom, boom. Drop a line down there. Let's sharpen this pencil. Alright, so we've got our head here. The lines will help us find these elements like the shoulder blades, right? They're going to help us find the, the shoulders from side to side. They're going to allow us to line up, again, the concept of where the hip bones are going to be. But you can see that having this concept of the center line is something that's really easy to keep us honest because we can trace the spine, we can trace the um, which goes directly up the, the figure, and we can use that to help us find these different elements and, and that you know just immediately will get us a lot closer to having something that feels symmetrical. And again, what we're after now is we've got this grid this way, right? We sort of have a grid this way. We don't really need it for a lot of things. But this is where, again, you can line things up and try and imagine where we have symmetry. Now, if you wanted to get more technical with the symmetry, you could try and do more technical perspective work to mirror. Again, I'm just going to eyeball. And what I would suggest is you just keep trying to eyeball it until you get sick of eyeballing it and then go and learn how to measure it. Go and learn how to do it technically in perspective and it will hopefully be a lot more interesting then because then once you learn it, you can come back to this and you know that you'll be more accurate. As I keep saying, I feel like that's so important. It's important to fail here. It's important to try to eyeball. It's not a matter of like get, get to a point where you're a 10 out of 10 at um, technical perspective and then, uh, then you can start eyeballing. Um, no, you know, you, you are always guessing. You're always drawing cool stuff. Again, that's my primary recommendation is draw cool stuff and, you know, figure out what you need to learn from drawing that interesting stuff and do a little bit of this type of more academic study where we try and apply these things and then, um, you know, Go apply it to your cool stuff, and then you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That really is the sort of magical answer as far as I'm concerned. That's really what sort of worked for me, and that's what I find typically works with students is when they're constantly combining those two things. So what that means is sometimes you jump in and try and guess, and you fail, and you can redraw, and you can sketch around and try and draw something interesting. Draw something fun, you know, try and if you want to draw mechs, you know, try and draw some mechs from different angles. If you want to draw, you know, fantasy stuff or aliens, you know, draw some alien characters from different angles, etc., etc. Now, I've talked a lot about in other videos as well how to add the musculature on top of the mannequin. So for this demo, we'll just deal with mannequins, right, because the process is almost identical. It's just a matter of thinking about, again, how the muscles kind of wrap around and, and look from different angles. But the trick here is how do we figure out how the where these points of proportion are. So again, I've got this bottom of this third proportion is often where I'm going to have my elbow. And here, again, I'm going to find that my I'm going to have a combination of, we've got the bottom of the pelvis here, and the hand, right, is going to stop, right, hand is sort of going to start just below there. the 
elbow. Right hand is going to... And this is where, again, what you tend to find is your intuition will be challenged. So the, the feeling of like, ha, ha, wait a minute, how long is this forearm? Well, I know from a proportional standpoint, right, if we look at this, that again, I've got that bottom of that rib cage. Just look at this and check. Because again, this is a major thing that will come up. I've got the bottom of the rib cage. All right, it's going to line up with that elbow. Now, it's very easy to figure out the depth and the length of these things when you're just drawing it flat on, but we, it's very easy to become challenged and accidentally draw stuff too long or too small or whatever. Just kind of, you just get tripped up and you're no longer able to engage your normal natural drawing intuition. So it's important here to double check and remember your proportions. We can see again at the bottom of the pelvis there, that's kind of where the hands start and the hands then go down and they're kind of, you know, ending about halfway up this bone or about, as I often say, one hand length above the knee or certainly the hinge point of the leg. So that is one of these things that's kind of quite tricky from a proportional standpoint to really get. All right. It's understanding where these lines are likely to go. Right, so then we're going to have a right, line about there. Right, we're going to have a hand. If the hand was sort of extended, it would be about here. Right, if it was in a fist, it would probably be here. And here we've got the knee. Here we've got this. Now, this I think is often the biggest problem when it comes to drawing these things from different angles is making sure that they connect with the ground and more important and probably the subject of a different video is how do you do as i was doing in that other sketch multiple characters from the um the same angle and make sure they all feel like they're sitting on the ground plane again this is where having a good sense of that center line will really help if we know where that center line is you can easily understand that the feet you know, if they're just sort of planted normally, which is what I'd recommend initially to give them just a standard sort of pose, is they're going to be equidistant, more or less, in a, in a standard pose from that center line. Now, again, the subject of another video is kind of how we modify the posture and get different feelings there. But just understanding where that center line is in space and then just sort of placing the heels of the feet somewhere so that there's an equal distance from here to here is super helpful. And then what I'm doing is basically just thinking about where these lines are going out at different angles. So you can think about that uh, from a two-dimensional standpoint. If I'm looking down, right, here's this line on the ground. Here's the center line. Here's this foot here, and here's this foot here. And what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, the feet are kind of turned outward. A little bit like they are here. Um, I, I'm doing it a little bit more exaggerated to, to make the point. But again, just visualizing the space, understanding the center, being able to measure, right? Again, it's the same thing. Visualizing the center line, measuring that space or guesstimating that space. Again, finding, visualizing that center, understanding the points. Right, so if we reattach our poor little skeleton's arm, um, again, this is the visualization we're trying to practice: is where's the center, uh, where is the um, wrist sort of point, and where's the other wrist point, and just visualizing the distance. Having that center line there is super important. Right, so this is what we're sort of trying to visualize: points here, points here, points here. And really, it is that simple. It's just a matter of staying true to the proportion, understanding how important the proportion is, understanding how important finding that middle section is. And what I'd say is not getting too lost in the perspective, just understanding that what we need is almost just parallel lines, right? Almost all I need to know is that, right, this line is kind of at like a similar angle to this one. It doesn't even need to be too much in perspective. I don't really even need 
these to be going to the same vanishing point. I just need them to kind of be almost in an isometric perspective to practice this. Again, once you start getting this and you're able to place these things accurately, I think that's when you'll be able to experiment a little bit more and take it to the next level. All right, let's try from below because I think, again, what that will do is help us to just reiterate, do the same thing again, but we'll deal with a much more extreme angle. So I have a basic angle there, right? But a little bit of, let, let's let's put a little bit of, a, of an angle here, right? So maybe the horizon line is super low down, right? Here we've got our horizon line. And again, what I'm after is a sense of where that center is. So I'm just going to... Now, again, th there's a procedural sort of thing here, which is obviously, um, you know, I could draw, I could draw a big box here, right? So I'm trying to find halfway here. Um, it doesn't really matter how big this box is. That's not really the point. All I need to do, you can sort of draw any old size box. Um, again, I'm going to run out of um, ruler. Let me find a bigger one. This will solve that problem. So you can see here that it's, it's going to find center right over here. But... That, that does give me a really good indication of where that's going to be because all, all I'm going to try and do now is sort of draw, um, if we sort of vi try and understand what's, what's happening from a visualization standpoint, right? I've drawn this, right? And what I'm trying to visualize is where this one is going to go. Now, it's not going to go there, right? I don't want to draw it that way because that doesn't look like it's going to the same vanishing point. I want to draw it so that it it feels like it's going to the same bump, same vanishing point over there, right? That's kind of what I want, right? And I want my horizon line to be somewhere there. That's kind of what I'm doing. Now, the line can be over here. It doesn't matter. What I'm after is where is halfway up this measurement. Right, so if there was a line here or a line here, if I find the center between this line and this line, it will give me halfway up all of these lines. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if not, um, it's a good example of, of how learning some more perspective may help. So here again, what I'm doing is, uh, this is the bit that will derail you if we, if we get it wrong. What I'm trying to do is figure out where I place this line. Now there's a really easy trick that you can use and that is to just measure. Um, this is another sort of easy sort of way you can do this to kind of help you guesstimate. What I can do is, is physically measure. Right here I've got, eh, right, sort of roughly, that's roughly 20. So 10 is going to be halfway up here. And if we sort of take a measurement here, that's 16 and a half. So 8 and a bit, right? It's going to be somewhere around there. So if I kind of draw a line between these somewhere around here, right? Again, those things don't all line up perfectly. That's going to give me a pretty good indication of where halfway up is. Or you can just guess. Totally up to you. This is a really good way where you can start to apply these boring perspective concepts to your drawing, get a better result, get a better guesstimate, and make sure, again, you're doing that thing, building that muscle of applying the technical knowledge to something that's actually going to help you. The other thing you can do is you can try guessing first, and then you can do all of the things and, and see how far you get. You can see I kind of guessed about there, and it was a little bit down there. The point is that we want to get a feeling for where halfway up this figure is, this if we then start drawing the rest of these lines. Because obviously what I'm going to do now is divide up this top thing into four sections and I'm going to divide this into half. And I'm just guesstimating at that point. Why? Because this is pretty accurate. And what you'll find generally with a lot of perspective is once you kind of key into it, 
once you kind of understand like, oh, I get what's happening here. Um, I've got a solid, I've got a solid indication. I know these are true. Then it's a lot easier for your brain to kind of guess the rest, if that makes sense. You kind of have the framework and the rest kind of fall into place. So again, I've got some of these lines going here. I'm not drawing them that accurately, but it is the same idea. We're going to have, and I, what I'll do and what, what I suggest to do is, is kind of just rough it in first, right? I'm going to have here sort of pelvic stuff here. Um, there's going to be a rib cage thingy here. Again, they're going to sort of line up a little bit. Again, you know, the side of the, right? side of the rib cage will kind of line up with the with the pelvis you kind of have that boom right it helps to it helps me anyway to sort of visualize the the spaces a little bit right take those sort of jelly bean take those where's a good place to draw here take take the jelly beans right and and add dimensionality right just think about like where is the three-dimensional space there let's draw through right Let's try and define that space. I'm going to have a right, spine that goes up like that. It's going to come back behind, right from the spine. Comes back, sort of curves in. Oh, sorry. Let's get that closer. Curves in on the small of the back, goes out, and then comes in. That's that sort of arc that I'm trying to visualize. So it's there, comes back up here, right, and then it's going to insert in the back of the skull there, right? And then I can draw the skull, right? I know, right? I can define dimensionality within that sphere, etc., etc. And here I've got, again, some shoulders, right? I'm gonna place those shoulders. Again, visualizing, right, Got sort of a neck here. Again, I feel like those shoulders could be a little bit, again, a little bit more on that line. Now, you can either rough in or guesstimate, make things a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. If you run into trouble there or consistently run into trouble, again, one of the things that I'm facing is, um, as I often see with these drawing demos, I'm looking at this paper from a little bit of an angle. I'm also meant to be looking up at it from the drawing. So it's going to be hard for me to gauge how big that head actually needs to be. But when I rough it in, again, the things that will help me to visualize that are, again, thinking about where that center line is. Right, so it's almost like we're sort of, you know, got the the sphere, right? We're sort of chopping half of it off. And then we got this, right? And there'll be like eyes here. So I'm sort of trying to think about where that is under there. That will sort of help. And again, this is just construction drawing. So you, you, you know, if you're practicing these things, go crazy with it. Draw the lines, make it messy. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's really... It's really worthwhile going um, going pretty rough, you know, as rough as you need. But again, you know, might find might need to make that head a little bit bigger or smaller. Uh, again, don't feel like when you're doing these exercises that you need to get the ruler out for everything. Part of this is training your intuition, your intuition, and your ability to just kind of wing it and and see how you go. So don't don't freak out if you know you're like, oh, I need to make the head a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Um, if it's really important and it's a really, really highly detailed illustration, then, you know, you might measure it out a little bit more. Um, but most of the time with the mannequin, what we're after is lining things up. The things that will make the drawing um, really sort of awful are if, uh, you know, the arms aren't lined up properly. Uh, you know, if, if, if the eyes don't sort of line up, right? If I don't, you know, if one eye's, um, you know, up here and the other eye's down there or something silly. Uh, it, those are the things that are going to make the difference. It's 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 easy to kind of make the head overall a little bit bigger, overall a little bit smaller. Make sure it fits the character you want. If you're drawing a manga character, obviously a head might be a little bit bigger. Eyes are going to be a little bit bigger, right? Might be some sort of crazy hair or something like that on the figure, 
who knows? Again, most of this is just get stuff in the right spot and then know the grid that you've got to line everything up on. But the good thing about um, proportion this way is that you know, I don't even have to start drawing the legs because I sort of know where they're going to go. Right? I have a good understanding and a good ability to guesstimate, um, you know, where that line is. So I kind of know where those legs are going to go. Right? I've got a pretty good, pretty good indication. Again, that's the heel of the foot. This is the ball of the foot. So we can't see it. This one's foreshortened, right? Coming at us. Again, that's, you know, its own little drawing problem that can be quite challenging to solve. But at its core is just, you know, going through things logically and kind of thinking about what you see when you're looking at a foot from front on. But as I said, you, I, I can either draw the legs or I could draw the hands because I know where everything is going to end up. We know what's going to happen. Now, I think probably um, again that's kind of where the bottom of that rib cage is meant to go right so the bottom of the rib cage is meant to be probably a little bit a little bit lower um, right navel is sort of going to be about there and that means probably I've drawn these shoulders a little bit narrow based on sort of, I think we're drawing sort of like a male figure. All right, so just gonna sort of guesstimate where that um, is gonna go and we're gonna line it up. And again, doing those things is, is totally fine. It, a lot of it is just recognizing the proportion. You know, you, you go through it and then just, you know, I realize, oh, that's right, you know, that um, torso, right, sort of comes down and, and you know, hits the bottom of that proportion, right? So we've sort of got one proportion, two proportion, three proportions, four proportions. And here, that's one, two, three, four. So I just drew this a little bit small initially. Again, not a problem because we can go in and adjust it. And that probably means visually this head is gonna wanna look a little bit bigger. But that is, that's all we need to do. I know that the shoulders are going to be there. Again, I know that the forearms are sort of going to bump. Going to be about there. And as I said, we probably draw the shoulders a little bit lower. Shoulder there, shoulder there. So as I said, it's totally fine to experiment, to push and, you know, play with these things, make the shoulders a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. The goal is for you to understand what's happening, be able to troubleshoot. If you make a mistake like I did um, there, then, you know, you sort of know how to fix it. And mostly that you're just lining things up. So just remember, we're trying to line things up, got the elbows are lined up, the, the hands lined up, the knees lined up etc 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 i'm finding center right center of that center of that right shoulders bump 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 etc so again same basic idea very simple to apply um, practicing it can be a challenge, right? You've got to keep trying. You've got to keep playing with these things. Um, it's very easy to make one mistake, as I said, you know, oh, this proportion's wrong. And the trick there is just fix it. Play around with fixing it. Fixing it is just as important as getting it right in the beginning. All right, we'll do one more little demo where we talk about a more sort of cartoony character and we'll apply the basic same concepts there. Again, just to reiterate and sort of talk about how you can apply these perspective things to anything. All right, so same idea, but let's draw a little character that maybe has some different anatomical things, but we'll apply the same basic concept. We'll draw it from above. So again, what I'm doing is sort of setting a grid that way, and then I'm drawing some kind of line to help me figure out what's happening with the character.
But in this case, mostly what I'm going to do is just discuss how we can use the concepts of form drawing to experiment. So here I'm going to have some sort of of those hip bones. But in this case, let's draw something that maybe is a bit more like a dragon or some little character who is a little bit more cartoony. So dragon sort of creature. Right. In this case, I'm going to draw think about where that's where the center is. I've got right, we're lining things up. What I'm going to do is line up that's where the knees are lined up and then I'm going to draw one of these sort of animalistic legs. All right, so let's transfer that over. Here I've got again from side to side Right, there's the center. Right, we've got this here. We've got that there. We're just drawing points in space. Here I've got my pelvis. Let's see if we can find that. This is tricky because we've got a lot of foreshortening here. Right, and then I've got this over here. Where's it hit the ground? Hits the ground kind of over here. So really what we have to think about is what is the line of where does that hit the ground? Right, and how do I how do I get that leg to sit there right? So again, if we were to look at this from above, if I draw this line from here, right, you've got sort of the pelvis and what we're doing is drawing legs out. Bump out here and then it goes back but that is kind of underneath All right so we're finding that point of this if we look at it from the side it's going don't 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 and we're finding these points and then it goes down and we don't really see that right and then it comes out right and we sort of barely see that. So this is where, again, some of that perspective will come in handy. So now I'm going to draw our rib cage. And let's, I think this is going to attach a little bit forward. So I still want to think about where that center line is going to be. But I'm going to transfer that over there. And so now what we're trying to do is find, again, like we'll have an arm here and an arm here. And we've got the spine wrapping around here. All right, we'll have a head. Bump, bump. And let's put some arms down here. So I'm just going to transfer that arm right over here let's have some big chunky hands All right so we've got mannequin like this hopefully you guys can see this and then we'll go let's extend out Right. Again, this is not a great design, mostly just because it's um, good to see all of these things working. Right, so we have a neck here, and then we're going to have a tail. Now we find the tail by finding the point on the ground. Right. Let's trace from there. We can think about what's happening here if we think about the side. Right, got pelvic bones, and this is coming up here, right, curving around, bump, and at the front there we've sort of got the shoulders, and then this is continuing forward, right, we've got some sort of thing 
them air. And what's happening is this is the ground, and what I want is the tail to come down here. Right? Although in this case it looks like it's coming a little bit more like that. So hopefully you can see how again we we can practice um, and, and again hopefully you can see how that is going to turn into some sort of fantasy character that might look interesting um, again just to sort of nail home the point if we can sort of erase some of that out and maybe you know put some extra sort of musculature on it so that you can see All right if we have some sort of arms like this. All right, leg. And here we'd have, again, some sort of toes. So yeah, again, hopefully you see that we could build that up if we wanted. And to me, you know, this is the sort of stuff that I was, you know, more interested in doing as, you know, characters that weren't, you know, um, typical humans. But the point is that just practicing these things, stepping through the basics, doing your simple division of space will really help. If you can do this right, if you can practice this and just keep going, you know, break out the ruler if you need to do it. If you're finding things are going wonky, as I said, go back, check your um, fundamental perspective knowledge, make sure that you're being accurate. A lot of the time, you know, these things are sort of going pear-shaped because, you know, as I said, we're trying to do a little bit too much of this extreme perspective. You're trying to do too much stick with something that's almost like an isometric perspective. Isometric perspective is where, again, the lines don't really go back to a vanishing point. They're just kind of parallel to each other. That will teach you the fundamentals of how to control these grids that underline the figure and the structure. Once you do that, then you can start to build out more interesting characters. You can start to play with, again, much, much more extreme views much much more extreme angles you know you could try something that is you know super distorted right where we're seeing like massive amounts of distortion there again you ratchet up the difficulty bit at a time do a little bit of this and um, again there's like levels to the degree to where you're studying these are still abstract studies do a few of these things and then just go draw your normal stuff for fun right that's what's important the idea is important um, having fun while you're drawing is important um, if you find that these are tricky as i said go back and just you know try and get your ability to draw cubes or some basic things um, as solid as that can be because then you find that there's fo there's follow-on there's a flow to how these things support each other but yeah, hopefully that has been interesting. Let me know in the comments. This is a little bit more of a technical one, which I do sort of apologize for. And the real challenge here is that I think both as a drawing teacher and as a student, what I remember, um, and I still find this kind of frustrating, is that it is hard to know where to approach this from. There's four or five things that you absolutely need to get right in order to start rotating these figures around and drawing them from different angles and there's no linear way you can do it i think that gives you some amazing solution where you just do a b c and then all of a sudden it magically works it's a progression again as i say people can get really good at drawing cubes and then they you know can't transfer those skills to their more interesting fun drawings and likewise you know if you just kind of keep doing this but you don't study the perspective then you know you're going to find it a little bit harder to um, you know draw these things from different angles and it's certainly going to take you a lot longer um, to get those things sorted so it's a matter of doing all of these things and trying to figure out where they fit into your art journey where they fit into your particular way of doing things and 
I think the most important thing is to look for failure. Look for places where you aren't understanding things. But jump in first. Don't be afraid. It's okay if you try these things and they don't work. Don't freak out. Just step back and say, hey, what do I need to learn? Which fundamental thing am I not getting? You know, Am I just completely not lining these things up? Um, in, my, in, in many cases, it is just one of the, the biggest problems that you'll face is just people will be trying to draw these kind of lines and they're not even remotely going to the same vanishing point. There's, there's a lack of accuracy. So that's where, again, just building your ability to draw straight lines to develop grids. Again, I'll link to that video in the description. Um, just making sure all of that stuff is solid will help immensely. But this is a long game. This is a long journey. If you're partway along the journey, then again, you probably sort of know that already. There's no trick. As I said, you've got to piece these things together in your subconscious mind a little bit at a time and you slowly build structures that support each other. But I think what you have to understand is this does work and you will get better at it a little bit um, by a little bit over time. So good luck with this. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments um, down below. And uh, But that's all I got for now. We'll catch you around. Happy drawing.